हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू जे जी केमिस्ट्री गाइज दिस इज आर सेकेंड वीडियो ऑन कॉम्प्लेक्सोमेट्रिक टाइट्रेशन इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव डन हाउ टू कैलकुलेट द मेटल आइन कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इन कॉम्प्लेक्सोमेट्रिक टाइट्रेशन इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो विल बी सींग सम प्रॉब्लम एंड द सोल्यूशन ऑन द टॉपिक स्टेबिलिटी कॉन्स्टेंट फैक्टर्स अफेक्टिंग द कॉम्प्लेक्सोमेट्रिक टाइट्रेशन डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ टाइट्रेशन advantages of edta or multi ligand multi dented ligand masking and demasking agent and the metal ion indicator let's begin complexometric titration in this very first question is what is conditional stability constant and what is its significance the questions which we are going to discuss basically are most important for the msc chemistry students and it will be helpful for those who are appearing for any competitive exam such as csir net examination gate and uh, other competitive exams also for iit jam and bsc chemistry students if you have this topic in your syllabus so you can think of like what is conditional stability constant and what is the significance then you have to tell the definition of it basically it is the equilibrium constant of the complex formation and it tells the strength of the interaction between the reagents that come to close to form the complex so this definition you can use it is represented by kf single prime Uh, is equal to kf alpha 4 where kf is the formation constant and alpha 4 is the fraction of the species for the tetra deprotonated edta ligand equal to the concentration of the complex divided by the concentration of the metal ion and the total concentration of the titrant which is edta represented by h4 by here and these are we have already discussed what does these terms belongs and we know that alpha 4 is basically it is ph dependent and it works on single ph only so therefore our conditional stability constant will also be ph dependent so if you change the ph the alpha 4 value is going to be different and so the conditional stability constant so what is the application or significance of conditional stability constant basically you can calculate the concentration of the complex as well as the concentration of the metal ion at equivalence and after equivalence point when you have excess of the ligand so this is how you can represent your answer for the question which may belongs for msc students for two marks category and we have already covered the significance and this note which is very important uh, for a short question now the second question is the magnesium 2 plus is added to ebt indicator solution in the estimation of hardness of water why basically we know the hardness of water belongs to the presence of magnesium and calcium so here we have the method called back titration which is carried out in the presence of magnesium chloride and here what is the first step here let's say you have the main reaction which is calcium 2 plus and edta which is your titrant or ligand will form a complex calcium edta this is the main reaction here we will take excess of the ligand or excess of edta which will be back titrated with this edta with the excess of magnesium 2 plus will form a magnesium edta complex this complex stability is less than the calcium edta complex so then the finally it will the remaining magnesium will form a complex with the indicator ebt which is blue in color and will form a complex red wine magnesium aerochrome black tea complex at the end point and signals the end point of titration break here so these are the three reactions by which we can identify the end point and it is used for the estimation of hardness of water next is discuss the effect of ph and second complexing agent we also called auxiliary complexing agent on the titration break or you can also say equivalence point of the complexometric titration a separate question may comes based on ph or separate question may come based on the second or auxiliary complexing agent we'll see combined first we'll see the effect of ph on the titration break so now we'll see if you chemical reaction you have metal which is your analyte will react with your titrant 
that is a ligand here it is diprotonated and the metal and ligand will form a complex it will release 2 H plus at pH 5 and then you can see when you increase the pH you have yeah, here H Y2 minus instead of H2 Y2 minus and it will release H plus at higher pH you have tetra deprotonated ligand which will form metal ligand complex and there is no H plus here so basically you can see that on decreasing the pH on decreasing the pH the protonation of the ligand or titrant occurs here you can notice on decreasing the pH the basically concentration of the Y4 minus is going to decrease because it is getting protonated and so the equivalence point will be decreased the sharpness of the end point will decrease at lower pH why because the free concentration of the ligand is going to decrease if it is going to decrease the sharpness of the end point will also decrease because the total concentration of the ligand is less so you can make a note as the pH of the solution decreases the concentration of the free ligand decreases and so the sharpness of the end point decreases on the other hand you can make a note that on increasing the pH value it can form a slightly soluble metallic complex uh, hydroxide complexes the reaction will occur something like that in alkaline solution so basically the analyte will form the hydroxide complex and replacing the EDTA here so this complex the hydroxide complex are more stable than the ED, metal EDTA complex in uh, or at high pH value so we will see how we can avoid this situation now you can note a few points here that how we can uh, increase the sharpness of the end point first is basically you can say that the larger the stability constant or conditional stability constant larger will be the end point, end point break so by keeping the stability constant high you can get the sharpness of the end point and the next point larger the stability of the complex you have lesser the tendency of the hydroxides to form so this again we should maintain the stability constant high to avoid the formation of metal hydroxide and to get the sharper end point so these are some important points we will see the second effect effect of a second or auxiliary complexing agent so what happens when you have second complexing agent the free metal ion concentration is going to decrease because it is going to form a complex with the interfering complexing agent or auxiliary complexing agent so what happens here basically we use auxiliary complexing agent when you have to titrate the system in alkaline solution with EDTA we use complex auxiliary complexing because we know at higher pH value in alkaline solution metal hydroxides are formed so to avoid the formation of metal hydroxide we add auxiliary complexing agent so what happens here let's say first is your metal uh, which is acting as analyte and your titrant EDTA will form a complex uh, in alkaline solution and we know at uh, in alkaline solution this reaction will predominate that OH minus ions are present which forms more stable complex uh, as precipitated as zinc hydroxide so basically we need to avoid this uh, reaction because ultimately your main reaction is getting affected so here we will add the auxiliary complexing agent let's say example ammonia there are many we are using here ammonia which will form a complex with the zinc which is less stable as your zinc EDT complex and this is your secondary complexing agent which the second step that since it is less stable you have excess of EDTA will form a complex zinc EDTA because it is more stable multi tended ligand and therefore the rate of reaction will be fast so basically in the presence of alkaline medium the rate of reaction is slow to increase the rate of reaction we add the auxiliary complexing agent and so the reaction rate is high and you get more stable complex and here one important point that you have to be careful for the concentration of auxiliary agent that it should not be 
very high if you are using high concentration of the auxiliary agent the sharpness of the end point decreases so basically we need to maintain the concentration of auxiliary agent as as dilute as possible to have the sharpness of the end point or to have a large titration break one should maintain the concentration of auxiliary agent less or diluted so you can make the note that auxiliary agent concentration concentration decreases sharpness of the end point increases this is the effect of the reagent now this is again important question that normally you can see multi ligand ligands are preferred for complexometry titration give reason or they may ask advantages of edta ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid for complexometry titration as a reagent so we know multi dentate ligands are usually having four or six donor site one best example is edta and why it is very important because it forms very stable one is to one complex with the metal so it is used as reagent the second point that you can do selectively titration with metal ions by controlling the ph value next point the disodium salt of the edta is commercially available and it is acceptable as primary standard so you can directly go ahead with this the metal complex are soluble therefore the co precipitation error doesn't occur which happens with other reagent finally we know that it, since it forms one is to one complex and very stable the reaction is very uh more complete with the cation and so it gives you sharper end point so these are some reasons why we use multi dentate ligand or edta as a titration titrant in the complexometric titration next is there are actually different types of methods for performing edta titration we'll discuss four different methods here first is direct titration so what happens here you have a metal solution a metal ion solution which is buffered means alkaline at certain ph value and titrated with respect to edta titrant so you have the metal plus you have indicator evt which is free indicator gives you blue color at alkaline condition maintaining the alkaline condition it forms a wine red complex with evt and then it is titrated with edta it will give you metal edta complex which is more stable than the metal indicator complex and gives you or signals you the end point by changing the color for the free ions of indicator this is how you can do the direct titration back titration we have already covered under hardness of water we we'll just quickly revise this that why we do back titration it is used for the metal ions which doesn't have the satisfactory metal indicator so like one of the example is calcium doesn't have uh, satisfactory metal indicator aluminum doesn't have satisfactory metal indicator so we can use back titration method first step is the addition of known excess of edta titration so the metal which is analyte will react with the excess of edta at certain alkaline system and will form a complex then the back titration is done with the presence of excess of edta with either magnesium or zinc it will form the zinc edta complex then the indicator reaction the zinc will react the excess of zinc we are taking here the left amount of zinc will react with the indicator and signals the change in the color for the zinc indicator complex the third method of titration is displacement or substitution titration and this is used for the metals which does not react with the indicator and so we'll have a certain list of metals where again it is uh, having the reaction with uh, magnesium edta since the complex stability is less it is going to form more stable complex uh, with the certain category of metals and so with the liberated amount of magnesium which we assume it is equivalent to the cation present and will be titrated with edta and in the presence of suitable indicator the next and last is alkylimetric titration as the name suggests alkylimetry we can see 
here that the disodium ADTA is added to the solution of metallic ions and the complexes are formed with the liberation of two equivalent of H plus. So basically the metal uh, degen reaction will occur with the loss of two H plus ions and these liberated hydrogen ions will be titrated with sodium hydroxide. So it's basically the acid base titration in the presence of acid base indicator. So this is the metal EDTA titration then the liberated hydrogen will react with base and the indicator will give you different color for the base form and for the acidic form and you can identify the end point. So these are four different methods of complexometric titration. The last is describe the masking and demasking agent with suitable examples. Very important what is masking agent? A reagent that prevents reaction of some metal ion with the EDTA. So we will see that these reagents form complexes with the interfering ion which are more stable than the formation of metal EDTA. So we will see let us say you have a mixture of metal ions you have to do selectively titration for each metal ion then what we will do we will mask one of the metal ion and will perform titration with the other. Later on we will release the masked metal with demasking agent and will perform the titration. So masking agents can be many we are taking example here cyanide and this cyanide masking agent we are using for certain category of metals you can see here silver copper gold zinc. So basically it will form a complex with the metal cyanide complex and so this step is called masking. The metal is masked here and later on after the reaction occurs with the other metal present it is released with the demasking agent. The example can be you have a mixture of formaldehyde and acetic acid which will release the zinc from the complex. Let us say we are having the zinc as an example here. So you have the reaction where the zinc is liberated and then you can perform the titration of this liberated metal ion with EDTA ligand and find the end point. So these are the chemical reaction which occurs and some topics important topics for the MSc chemistry students uh, to cover for their examination. Happy learning!